Even the top online marketing and search engine optimization firms have been caught cheating this past year as Google keeps changing the game. Well, there's a local web marketing company that has stayed ahead of the Google Worldwide machine. Site Strategics. Online at sitestrategics.com. And this is Edge of the Web Radio. Here's your host, Aaron Sparks. Hey, welcome, uh, welcome back to The Edge. This is uh, Edge of the Web Radio, and we are, are continuing our conversation, uh, with a u- really unique conversation between uh, three superintendents of the state of Indiana. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us uh, in, in this education-focused Edge of the Web here today. My pleasure. So around the table, we, uh, I'd like you to introduce yourself again real quick. Dr. Dr. Butts, go ahead. Jeff Butts, superintendent of the Metropolitan School District of Wayne Township in Marion County on the west side of Indianapolis. Very good. This is Dr. Scott Hanback, superintendent at Tippy Canoe School Corporation in Purdue University country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is Jeff Hendricks, uh, superintendent, school town of Munster, just outside of Chicago in beautiful northwest Indiana. It's like a travel brochure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking to these gentlemen because they also happen to be top brass of the Indiana Association of Public School Superintendents. That's an organization that covers the entire state of Indiana. They actually have a conference coming up uh, this December 13th, 14th, and 15th at the Hyatt Regency where a number of different topics are going to be discussed from edu- education and learning in, in, uh, in kindergarten and, and uh, elementary school all the way through through, through uh, different topics of leadership. In fact, the keynote speaker uh, is going to be talking about John, Maxwell, John Maxwell's uh, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Fantastic book. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a lot of information for everybody that's in, in education. There's a lot of uh, uh, availability of tickets as well to be able to come in and learn so much. You can check out everything at iapss.org. Uh, in our last segment here, I really wanted to jump in and get the, these gentlemen's thoughts on uh, some a very very important topic. It, it, it is it is to us as as well as most especially to the superintendents, and that is the one on one technology and how it allows teachers to differentiate their their teaching um, uh, methodology. So, if I could, Doctor Butts, could I ask you to kind of tee up the entire concept of of technology one to one. Certainly, and thanks for that opportunity. I think um, different districts across the state of Indiana are in a different place, and, and certainly there's different formats, platforms, and, and uh, devices that uh, our, our districts are using. Yep. Uh, many of our districts uh, have devices that they have distributed to children, whether it be a Chromebook, uh, an Apple iPad, or a, a MacBook, or anything like that. Um, and others have gone to more of a bring your own device or BYOD mm-hmm. and, and opening opening up their network so the students can utilize their own device and be somewhat device agnostic. Um, but you know we sometimes get hung up on the device, and in fact, it's more than just about the device. It's about what we do with that device, the the access to digital content in our district with seventy six percent poverty um, and twenty seven percent mobility. The conversations we have is. Access to content is the great equalizer. It gives our students the opportunity to access any content that anyone else living anywhere else may get, even though they're not traveling, maybe they don't have the opportunities to see in real life some of the things that we're talking about, they can still access that content and have that knowledge uh, by getting onto their uh, device and mm-hmm. looking uh, at, at, uh, uh, at, at the digital content on the web. Um, also, we you know it's important for us to make sure it's another learning tool. The notebook is a learning tool. The calculator is a learning tool. Heavens, our pencils are learning tools. Absolutely. So is the digital device. It is not the the savior. It's not going to to fix everything that um, that that is going on in our classrooms and with our students learning. It is one more tool that we have in our toolbox to utilize. And I know both Dr. Handback and Dr. Hendricks feel the same way because they're also digital leaders in their communities and, and really pushing this initiative. Mm-hmm. No, excellent. Now, and and Dr. Butts, you actually have a, a pretty sizable program with Google. An arrangement with Google of actually, uh, I think, five thousand Chromebooks in your your district alone, correct? We yeah we actually uh, we're we're closer to ten thousand uh, Chromebooks actually that oh uh, that we have distributed and uh, um, you know our hope is honestly our hope is to get away from digital um, provided or 
district provided devices mm -hmm. uh, and we know as time goes on more and more of our students will have devices that they can get onto uh, because it's, it's really not about the device it's about the platform and, and the Google platform that we mm -hmm. utilize can be accessed by any device that right. they have and uh, that that's the one that we've chosen it's been successful for us um, and, and it fits well in our community excellent gentlemen uh, would you like to ca uh, care to contribute into this as well well, well, actually, Aaron, uh, the school town of Munster has been in uh, the one-to-one uh, -one business for about five years now. That's fantastic. And and uh, we've we've been using uh, Dell notebooks, and uh, so we've we've been in it for a while and trying to continue to figure out how to best uh, impact student learning, taking our students to a higher level of learning. And uh, you know, some of the issues we are we are seeing at this point in time is is not so much the the uh, computer itself mm -hmm. or choice is the fact that we can't really continue to support it financially. And so we're looking at other ways of, as, as Jeff pointed out, not so much focusing on the device, but on the fact that if the platform, if we can go to a, a virtual desktop and, mm -hmm. and eventually uh, lead to students bringing in their own devices, and then when they come in, they log in and they get a virtual desktop, mm -hmm. and we really get out of the hardware business. I think that's one of the focuses as we move forward because it is an extremely expensive um, practice to have in a school district is mm -hmm. is to have uh, laptops or, or Chromebooks or uh, iPad minis to replace those about every four years. Sure. It's just a very expensive uh, uh, initiative. And and you're, you'll be meeting, meeting the, the public's use of of the i mean there's more and more smart devices coming through the system all the time and it's it's it's, it's connecting with more and more demographics as well so um that's where the community engages is at the mobile level and be able to put, provide an education platform as well and that's where the software as a service the SaaS model is truly coming into its its own from an education standpoint because you can deliver differentiation of content based on the needs of, of the student, right? And the, and the teacher can actually determine what type of content. So you now have a new medium to be able to regulate and connect with students at a one-to-one -one level where they've never had that before. You know, it, it's interesting. You look at uh, the MSD of Wayne Township is 37 square miles. Uh, Dr. Handback has a much different situation because his school corporation is 400 more square miles, 437 square wow. miles, I think he said. Um, so I know he can speak... Um, to to just how that is able mm -hmm. to bring everybody together in such a large school corporation. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Definitely. I mean, as students have evolve, mm -hmm. so do our systems and our tools that help shape the way that our kids, you know, engage and 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 empower them. And so the goal of the Tippett Canoe School Corporation's one to one initiative is to provide students with these engaging student centered learning experiences sure. where the technology is utilized. Uh, you know, having that equitable access, 24-7 access, you know, our students leveraging these 21st century skills, you know, collaboration and communication and thinking critically and being good problem solvers. And so our program looks uh, very similar to others in that both of our high schools, those students receive uh, a laptop for their use mm -hmm. uh, at school and home. Uh, and then beginning uh, just this year, we started piloting that at our middle schools. And so uh, but during that transition, we are uh, moving away from a Windows-based laptop to the Google Chromebook, and that has so far been, been well-received, and it just seems to connect um, better with when we start talking about that learning management system and that system that's embedded in our classrooms mm -hmm. because, you know, the technology doesn't drive the curriculum. You know, the curriculum wins. The right. instructional strategy wins, and that's first and foremost. The technology comes in to... Uh, assist and and help and and, and make things more uh, efficient. Absolutely, yep. definitely one of our challenges is this whole uh, equitable access. And with a rural district like ours, you know, we I don't know that we have any folks on on dial up, but they certainly not all of them have high speed, and many of right. them access the internet only through a cell phone connection that they have into their home. And so we always have to be cognizant of the fact of what we're doing online with kids when they take that home. 
what kind of access do they do they have at home? That that's very important to us. Absolutely. Well, uh, there's certainly uh, technology is now meeting the needs of education more and more, and that's that's what's fantastic because you're seeing that evolve right in front of you. You know, human being human beings don't naturally all learn the same material at the same time, and the one to one technology allows teachers to differentiate their content and student assignments to meet the needs of all students. You're going to see this ongoing into education, um, and gentlemen. I really do appreciate the time. Time you've been able to spend with us today. And again, the IAPSS conference is December 13th, 14th, and 15th at the Hyatt Regency. Go check out everything at IAPSS.org. Uh, and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure speaking with each and every one of you. And you certainly do represent the best of the best inside of education in the public school system. I just want to say thank you very much.